Hi, my name is Jill Kurtzels. I'm a lieutenant with the Wausau Police Department. Today I'm going to talk to you about an incident that happened in 2010 that greatly affected me. These are the things they don't tell you about this job. This is Behind the Call. The incident I'm going to talk about today happened in April of 2010. It was the first nice day of spring. It was beautiful outside, sunny. Everybody was out enjoying the weather. Families were out. Bikers were out. Um, just everybody was out having a good time. I was on the west side of town when a call came out for a pedestrian that was struck by a vehicle um, just outside Marathon Park. I did not know who was involved, but I started responding um, in emergency mode. When I arrived on scene, there was a large group that was already gathered. Um, the, uh, there was one officer already on scene, and I noticed that he was crouched down by somebody, and there was two females that were um, kind of crouched down by him too. When I got out of the squad car, ran over to the scene, and when they kind of moved back, I was able to see that there was a little boy on the ground that was not moving, he was unconscious, didn't have any visible injuries at that time. The females that were there explained that they were nurses that were off duty, they were just driving past the scene and they wanted to help. So we talked about what we were going to do and that we were gonna roll the boy over onto his back to assess him and then um, provide life-saving measures. So we rolled the boy over, we assessed him for any injuries, um, listening for breathing, and then at that point it was agreed upon that I was going to start CPR. For whatever reason, right when I was about to start CPR, I noticed out of the corner of my eye that the ambulance had arrived. And instead of starting CPR, I ran to the paramedics that had just arrived and told them there was a little boy that needed their help and they needed to hurry. We ran back to the child and the paramedics began CPR. At that point, the mom had two other children with her and I had radioed two other officers to bring an unmarked vehicle with child seats so that I could get them up to the ER. While waiting for the unmarked vehicle, we were able to learn what happened, which was the mom was taking her three children to Marathon Park to enjoy the weather that day. They were walking in an alley um, just to the north of Stewart Avenue, which is a very busy, busy road. One of the children had a shoelace that was untied so she bent down to tie the child's shoelace and she was still holding the hand of the little boy um, that was hit by the car. As she was trying to tie the shoelace, the little boy ripped his hand away from her and ran towards the park and into the street and he was struck by a vehicle. At that point, there was a concrete barrier, a wall that separated the, you know, the alley from the roadway so it was very difficult to see. Um, so the person would not have been able to stop in time. Once we were able to establish what happened, I drove the mom and the children up to the hospital and we sat in a private room while the ER staff cared for her child. And at some point, I don't remember anymore if we were, the nurse and I that were there with the mom and the children, if we were asked to leave the room or why we left the room. But we took the kids, the nurse and I took the kids out of the room and the uh, ER doctor the ER doctor went inside the room and told the mom that her child had died. And I just remember the screams. I 
It was hard hearing that, hearing her scream out loud and just screaming no over and over again. And at that point, obviously, the nurse and I had figured out what happened. And um, we had to try to distract the kids while keeping our composure, because we didn't want the kids to obviously know what was going on. And um, at some point, family had arrived, and um, the nurse and I were able to bring the children back to the family, and then we were able to leave the or I was able to leave the hospital. I remember walking out to my squad car and trying to keep my composure, keep it together until I could just get to my car. And then once I got to the car, completely broke down. Um, I had convinced myself at that point that I was the reason that child had died. So I cleared from the hospital. It was already the end of my shift. And instead of going back to the police department, I went home and washed my face and reapplied my makeup because I didn't want anyone to know I had been crying. Really, I was just I felt ashamed. I was embarrassed. And I didn't want anyone to know that this call was affecting me. Once I put my makeup back on and made it back to the police department, basically ran inside the building, put my squad keys away, and then I drove home. So I called in sick um, the next day, and that then led into my days off. Felt like I couldn't go to work, because if I couldn't help this little boy, how was I supposed to help anybody, anyone else? Um, spent a lot of time those a couple of days I was off, walking, crying a lot, trying to figure out how to deal with this situation. At one point, my husband, who was a police officer, had told me that he informed our deputy chief at the time that I was struggling and that I needed to talk to somebody. I was told a debriefing had been set up and that everybody from the everybody that was involved in the incident would be there. I remember being very angry with my husband and somewhat feeling like, I guess, betrayal in a sense, just because I didn't want anyone to know how I was feeling. And I just wanted to keep it private. And when anyone asked, I kept saying I was fine. I went back to work. And I had worked the day of the debriefing in the morning. And I remember just, I spent a lot of time in my squad car alone. It was pretty emotional when I was at work. And we got to the debriefing. And I remember I was terrified because I didn't know what to expect and I didn't want people to see me upset. There was several professions there, so medical examiners, the nurses involved, the paramedics involved, firefighters. Um, so everybody was there. We talked about the situation and from everybody's points, you know, their point of view and it was good for me to hear what everybody else had saw and how they were feeling. And I had learned from the medical examiner that the boy had died instantly upon impact. I had several different emotions at that point. In a sense, I felt relieved that I had not been responsible for the child's death by not starting CPR right away. I also felt guilty that I was feeling this way because the mom and other people involved were still struggling. The mom had lost her child and how could I feel relieved about the situation? I also felt like I had a second chance at this job again. The nurse that I had been with that evening it was another officer's wife, so I knew her. And I remember telling her and her husband when he had sent me a message asked me how I was doing because his wife was struggling, saying I was fine, everything was fine. And obviously when we were at the debriefing together, things were not fine. After the debriefing was over, I didn't talk about this again with anyone. I remember completely avoiding the crash scene, refusing basically to drive by it for quite a while, which is an issue because it's one of our main roadways in this town. 
probably about a month it took me to at least drive through the area. I would purposely take routes where I didn't have to drive past that alley. When I finally decided to drive past it, I remember letting my foot off the gas and holding my breath. And I just coasted, coasted by the area. And when nothing happened, I remember from there on out being able to kind of relax a little bit and breathe a little bit more when I drove through there and eventually it got better. In 2013, our agency started a peer support team and I was asked to join at that time, which was very eager to be a part of because I wanted to make sure that anyone that was exposed to critical incidents that they had someone to speak with. I didn't want them to feel alone like I did. So one of the takeaways from this is, if you're thinking about being involved in this career, know that it's okay to ask for help. It's okay to say you're not fine and have a strong support system in place for when you begin your career. If my husband wouldn't have reached out to anybody, I don't know if I would still be in this field. I'm not sure what I would be doing, but I don't think I would still be a police officer. It's important for your family to know that they can reach out to someone too. And for you to know that you probably are going to be angry with them. You might feel like you're being betrayed by your family members, but they certainly have your best interest in mind. Sometimes we feel like we don't need the help while other people can see it and know that we do need help. Throughout my career, there's been a lot of ups and downs and anyone that goes down this career path will certainly have their ups and downs. But just remember there are so many good days and positive days and things that come of this career. And just to keep your head up and make sure that you, if you need help, you ask for help so that you can continue on and make a difference.